and now we're starting with the very first layer. So this, oh, hang on, I got it wrong. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Today we are doing a passion project, something that's been in the old brain box for over a year and I finally got round to doing it. It's a, a beautiful painting called Super Frida Kahlo um, and it's a mashup of Frida and Superman or Superwoman or Supergirl or just the super emblem and what that stands for, what it... Um, you know, what it represents. Um, it's a mix of all my kind of techniques. We've got a bit of inking, we've got a bit of stenciling, we've got a bit of drawing, we've got a bit of freehand, we've got a bit of acrylic, we've got everything, everything at all. But we're going to start the base with um, the uh, stencils. Uh, you just saw me paint a bit of blue there. That was me just doing the background of the uh, blue of the S for the Superman. And the very first layer of Carlo there, um, Frida, sorry, let's go to Frida. Let's go to my first name. <laughs> um... The, I can't remember what that color is, but it's an MTN 94. You can see them in the background. And then I was just touching up the uh, blue there with uh, just putting some blue of the paint on a brush, which works fine, but it does destroy your brushes because, you know, uh, spray paint is pretty bad for a brush. And then I'm putting some little hands there, which looks a very, very weird shape indeed. Um, I'm now going down to the next layer. Uh, this is, as you can see, um, Sisquento, Sisquento, Shuiquento, something like that it's called, something brown like that, Sisquento, I'm going to keep saying weird words, um, and you see I have laid that down and weighed it down with various bits and bobs, and straight away you go, hello there, hello Frida, don't you look good, and suddenly she comes alive, uh, you find that when you use stencils, uh, that each time you put on a new layer, it comes alive a bit, and uh, I think she looks pretty bang in there, um, and now I'm going with the S, it's weird, this thing, this S, has haunted me for my whole life. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I used to draw Spider-Man all the time and Batman all the time. And I never drew Superman, many because I wasn't a big fan of him. It was a bit boring. But I could not draw that S. And I still can't draw that S. I tried drawing this S freehand. It just wouldn't go right. So I made this silly, tiny little stencil just so I could get the S correct. Um, oh, there I was doing the highlights on the skin. But it's all on the same stencil. And now we're doing the uh, the S here. Yeah, um, I don't know why. It's There's something in my brain that will not draw that S correctly. So... Normally I would have just drawn that, but I had to use the old um, spray paint there. Um, and then again, I'm going in with the brush um, to touch it up, just spraying the um, paint into the cap or a palette or something and just touching it up. Um, like I said, this will wreck your brushes, but if you've got some 100% pure acetone, that should clean it. Um, and here, I did actually cut the uh, black stencil, the black layer, the shadow layer. If you see um, a video I'll post it down in the description which is me cutting the stencil for this um, so you can see it so I did cut the black stencil but when I did my test spray I wasn't super happy with how it looked so I thought I oh, will just freehand all of this and that's what I'm doing here I doodled it out with the old Posca pen um, if you've been watching my videos you know they are my go-to doodle pen uh, I love the ink of them I love how they work and you've got all the different nibs um, and then I'm just going with black um, so this black here is acrylic um, Acrylic and spray paint have a very similar um, gloss or a similar shine to them, a sheen to them. Obviously, some different uh, brands look different, but this these ones are um, Pebio and Windsor & Newton Galleria are the two I'm using here. Um, and now that yellow, I did not like the yellow I used under there. It looked awful. Um, it was the first time I've ever used that yellow. Um, it was a gold uh, Montana Gold one, which a friend of mine gave me when she moved studios. Um, and I tried it. It looked really nice when I put it on, but as soon as I put the S on it, it just looked completely wrong. So um, if you've ever used yellow before, you know it's the weakest, crappest, awfulest, awfulest pigment to use. Um, so to get that decent, I've given it a white base. So you can see that it's just a white over the top of it, just to give it something to um, adhere to and get the um, viscosity of it correct. Oh, I've got a cup of coffee. Let me just have a little drink of my coffee. Hold on. <sighs> Um, and then I'm painting in the strands of her hair um, and just touching up. Really, this is just all the black. Um, I'll put a little bit of white around the outside. Just that was just to help me getting the neck and the uh, shape of her head correct. Should I talk about Frida? I talked about Frida in um, the stencil video, but if you don't know who Frida Kahlo is, she is probably the most important female artist. She um, she had a horrendous life, if you read about her. She had uh, polio as a kid and a major car crash, which messed up her spine, which meant she um, was bedridden. And because she was bedridden, she started painting. And that's what, uh, you know, got her into being an artist. Her 
her husband was a very famous artist. I can't remember his bloody name. Um, but when she was alive, people cared more about him than her. But obviously, um, in the 70s, when the feminist movement and the female artists came together, we saw her because she was um, very important because she was painting life as a female um, before anybody else did, um, even though she became respected for that many years after she had died. Um, she died. I can't remember what she died. I remember she had a leg amputated as well just before she died. Oh, horrendous. Um, but yeah, a feminist artist, because she painted her pain, uh, what it was like to be a woman. She painted, um, I guess, things that were gender defining. She painted her moustache. She painted her, uh, what do they call her, unibrow. Um, and that was amazing for the time. And it is still amazing, which is even more horrendous that uh, it's still not fully um, accepted so that's why I wanted to paint her she is an icon and I thought it'd be cool to mash her up with another icon and you know she is superwoman supergirl superman super whatever you want her to be she's super um let's go back to the thing I'm painting some little lines in there to give the impression that the uh, shirt is coming apart um this is very important not to overdo this because I don't want people to focus on the uh, shirt um, I'm just whacking around the edges white just so I can see the definition. Um, as you can see now, I am not happy at this point with the face. I can't remember when I sort this out. Oh, here we go now. So you can't see there, but I am changing that tone quite dramatically. It doesn't really show on the camera. It was a very um, sort of, it was bone, the color. Um, it was a very yellowy, sort of nearly pukey color, and it just didn't work. Um, so I've gone completely over that. Um, that. The color there is just what my base color is mixed with white. Um, and I've taken away a lot of the swirls because, again, I didn't think it was needed. Um, and this Superman top, I repainted this so many times. I kept making it more detailed, then I made it more simple, then I made it more detailed, blah, 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 back and forth, back and forth. And this still is not the final top. <laughs> I painted it another time, I think, which is ridiculous. Here we go. Um, so now I'm going in the Posca. This was me trying to figure out how to get this top working. So I thought, you know, what, I'll add the detail to the Superman logo, to the Superwoman logo, to the Super logo, to the logo, um, and then I'll figure out from there excuse me i just burped <laughs> um where are we just the blue 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 um so i figured here we're not going to make it detailed we're just going to put a couple of block colors in um, and that's what i'm going to do uh retouching the face more as you can see simplifying the face oh i've got no shirt on that's a bit embarrassing I do apologize. Um, I hope you're not eating your breakfast. Um, now I'm going to do the background. So I am masking her off so I can go in and paint the background. Um, masking off is very, very slow, very, very tedious. Um, here I'm using yellow frog tape. I don't normally use the yellow frog tape for this. Uh, the frog tape, yellow one is for very delicate surfaces. doesn't really work for this. The green is much better. So um, if you can use the green. Um, and I'm just taping it around her and then cutting her around. And now I am just spraying all this yellow over here. Um, can't remember what this color is called. Yolk yellow, I think. Something like that. Um, and I thought it looked pretty cool. So I'm spraying all that. That's good. And then you can see her. There she is. So that's how the masking works. And you just take the tape off and you get a nice sharp line as long as you put the tape down. And now I wanted this sort of pop art explosion behind her. Um, if you look at a lot of uh, Lichtenstein's work and things, people like that, you've got these explosions, these sort of comic book. Ooh. Um, and the yellow one in the background, that was referencing the very early Superman comics. Um, so that's why there's yellow, just in case you wondered. Um, and again, masking off the bits I wanted, masking off the bits I didn't. And this, this is a tedious damn process. Um, and then I'm going into this with um, another color. This is um, Cobra, this color. This is the first time I've ever used Cobra paint in a painting, not on the street. And I did not like it. <laughs> so I won't be using it again. Uh, it nice, but man, it's slow to dry. Really, really slow to dry. Um, and there she is. Doesn't that little kid? I'm really happy with that. So now I'm going back in again and changing that blue. <laughs> I never stop. She's looking really cool. Um, I painted the sides of their black instead of doing a, um, a wraparound effect. Um, but you can see her there, this, this sort of bright boom um, of Frida over the top. And I love that her um, face is blank. If you notice, I also took away the um, flowers and her earrings and stuff. I wanted to make her look like she was, you know, uh, transforming into this power. Um, instead of having these these flowers, so I had to make up with the hair. I think I got it right. Um, it's not a lot more to say. There she is, super Frida Kahlo. Um, I adore this painting. I adore the composition, and it's been in my brain for so so long. Maybe like two years, no, a year, maybe year and a half. And I finally got around to doing it, and I'm so happy. I finally did it. So uh, here she is. Let's have a little look. There you go. You can see the the difference coloring to the details. You cannot see that before. Um, there's her face, her neck, and then we go into this darn 
S logo. You can see how many times I have repainted that from the texture. Her hands, that wicked background, that sort of yolky yellow with that very definite harsh yellow. It looks really good, doesn't she? I'm really happy with her. Um, and whoom! So there it is, Super Frida Kahlo. Super Frida, whatever you want to call it. Um, a wicked paint to do. One that I was so passionate about doing, and it's taken me a long time to get around to doing it. Um, I don't know when I cut the stones, that was a long time ago. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, I shall see you in the next one. Art nerds, bye! Woo!